Mr. Speaker, it's time for this government to stop the delays and its unexplained reluctance to shine a spotlight on foreign interference. Foreign operatives have been interfering in Canada's political system, in party nomination processes, and in election campaigns to place Chinese Communist sympathizers in the provincial legislature and the House of Commons. Media have seen reports indicating Liberal Party officials and elected representatives have been involved. We are also aware of reports that have involved a member of the federal cabinet. Mr. Speaker, the situation is not new. The Prime Minister, various cabinet ministers, and senior members in the PMO were briefed about foreign activities and individuals who are complicit in illegal activities. However, the response from the Prime Minister has been to deflect this serious issue and delay doing anything. Now he has finally taken some action by appointing a special rapporteur to investigate foreign interference. However, it's not exactly clear what investigatory powers have been given to Mr. Johnson. While an individual of impeccable character, perhaps an exception being his bad choice of charitable boards, Mr. Johnson will be handcuffed and saran wrapped if unable to investigate the inner activities of the Liberal Party's elected and non-elected members. Mr. Speaker, it would be unimaginable for the Special Rapporteur to have no authority to fully investigate the stated primary beneficiary of foreign inter in interference, the Liberal Party of Canada. Why then, Mr. Speaker, has there been such a reluctance by the Prime Minister for a full, independent public inquiry? In other countries, there wouldn't be a Special Rapporteur, there would be a Special Prosecutor one that would have full investigatory powers, including interviewing political party members, have subpoena powers, and to examine documents. Why is the government allowing Canada to become a doormat for foreign powers? Why is it extending protection to those who have deliberately interfered in our country's democratic processes? How is it possible for the Prime Minister to turn a blind eye to thugs who have intimidated and threatened Canadian citizens of Chinese heritage in the Greater Vancouver and Greater Toronto area? How can the government ignore shady and undeclared financial contributors and buses of instant Josad Water, Liberal nomination supporters and paid volunteers to assist China's chosen candidates to get nominated and elected to all levels of government? Mr. Speaker, the goals of foreign operatives are simple infiltrate political parties and assist selected candidates to obtain elected positions from which they could support Beijing's interests, and two, to, secondly, to defeat opposition nomination candidates and or elected representatives who were not favorable to communist China or prevent them from being elected. Is the Prime Minister's continuing reluctance to do something in the face of such mounting evidence a result of being worried about what may come out of a full inquiry? Perhaps he's troubled by the growing suspicious, uh, suspicions being cast on cabinet, caucus, and party members. What's worrying our prime minister? What is it that has made him turn a long blind eye? Wouldn't the mounting evidence and allegations of foreign interference provide valid concerns to the prime minister? Is the prime minister worried of political fallout from the interference and his reluctance to do something? Is he worried that others in his party will be implicated? Obviously, one must protect Canada's intelligence service networks and their methods on how they acquire information. But when the network starts leaking information to the media about foreign interference, it kind of suggests they've lost faith in their political masters and their ability to do something about foreign interference. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader Senate. The member should try to educate himself, Mr. Speaker, on the difference between evidence and allegations. He used the term mounting evidence, quote unquote, those were his words. There is no evidence to date. As a matter of fact, the RCMP, Mr. Speaker, has said that they're not, they don't have any active investigations ongoing. What there have been is allegations. And if the member is unaware of the difference between allegations and information and intelligence versus evidence, he should really take the time to educate himself on that. 
But I think what's even more uh, um, remarkable about his speech in terms of a massive misunderstanding of the reality of the situation, Mr. Speaker, is when he opened his speech and said that the government has done virtually nothing. That is categorically false. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, this government is the only government that has ever done anything on this issue. Since 2015, I will inform the member what we have done. We introduced Bill C-76. This is a, that, that was a bill that tightened up financing rules and tightened up opportunities for foreign interference specifically. The Conservatives, which this member seems to be cozying up to a lot lately, actually voted against that, Mr. Speaker. The other thing we did was we installed a special expert, a special panel of experts that deal with that have the ability to monitor in real time what's going on during a writ period. They have the opportunity to assess, make decisions, inform parties, gather intelligence from political parties, and take action when necessary. That is a panel that never existed before. And most importantly, Mr. Speaker, after the panel, after the election is over, an, uh, a third party prepares a report based on the panel's information. That third party concluded both after the 2019 and 2021 election that the elections were done in a free, fair, open and transparent manner and were not influenced by foreign interference. Finally, Mr. Speaker, his issue about the public inquiry, perhaps he didn't hear my answer to the question uh, from the, the impromptu question from the NDP member just before him. And I laid it out very clearly. The, the experts that he gave a lot of credit to in his speech and he sang the praises of CSIS and said we have to respect their processes, well, I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, CSIS came to the, per, the PROC committee and specifically told us the place to do this is not in a public inquiry. We have the established um, uh, uh, organizations such as NSICOP. Another thing that this government put together that specifically looks um, and has the ability for parliamentarian oversight on highly classified information. That is the best place that we were told it should go. But notwithstanding that and understanding the incredible position um, uh, and the incredible attention that Canadians are seized and have with this issue, the Prime Minister went a step further and said, even though our experts are telling us a public inquiry is not the best place, we understand we need to put this in a nonpartisan in environment. We will allow a special expert, the former Governor uh, General David Johns uh, Johnston, to determine what the best path is forward. And as I said to the previous member, if it's determined that the best way forward is through a public inquiry, the Prime Minister has already said that we will accept that um, advice and that recommendation and proceed with it based on his advice. The Honourable Member for Spadina, Fort York. Mr. Speaker, there's a party line being towed here. The problem is, what party line? The Liberal parties or the Communist Party of China's? I call upon the government to step up and provide strong investigatory powers to the Special Rapporteur so that Mr. Johnson can unearth names and evidence of foreign interference in Canada and especially in Vancouver and Toronto during the last two elections. Canadians deserve and demand to know what's going on. They want to see concrete action taken to protect our political and democratic processes and institutions from foreign manipulation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. If I understood that member correctly, Mr. Speaker, he just, told, he just asked and questioned whether I was towing a Liberal Party line or a Communist Party of China line. My response to that member is, let's go outside and say it to me in public where you do not have the uh, parliamentary privilege that you have in this room.